Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We begin with the praise of Allah by asking Allah Azza wa Jalla to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to his family and his companions. Welcome to another episode from this brand new series, Ramadan Droplets. One point of benefit every single night in the month of Ramadan. And tonight, the benefit that we would like to share with all of you, inshaAllah ta'ala, is that this month of Ramadan is the month of ikhlas. It's the month of sincerity. And ikhlas has a very important position in every act of worship that a Muslim does. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Call upon Allah, making the religion sincerely for Him alone. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ In Surah Al-Zumar, Ayah number 11. Say indeed, I have been commanded to worship Allah, making the religion sincerely for Him alone. And all of us know the ayah in Surah Al-Bayyina. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ The only thing that they were commanded to do, the only thing they were commanded to do, is to worship Allah, making the religion sincerely for Him alone turning away from all acts of polytheism and to perform the prayer and to give the zakah and that is the upright religion. We know that Allah Azza wa Jal singled out a surah in the Qur'an, Surah Al-Ikhlas. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٍ And to give you an example of just how important the issue of ikhlas was to the early generations, the Salaf al-Salih, from the companions and the tabi'een and those who followed them with good, I'm going to quote to you the statement of Abu Muhammad Abdullah ibn Abi Hamza rahimahullah ta'ala. It's a beautiful statement just showing you how important teaching the people ikhlas Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the right niyyah was in their eyes. He said, وَدِدْتُ أَنَّهُ لَوْ كَانَ مِنَ الْفُقَهَاءِ مَنْ لَيْسَ لَهُ شُغْلٌ إِلَّا أَنْ يُعَلِّمَ النَّاسَ مَقَاسِدَهُمْ فِي أَعْمَالِهِمْ He said, I wish that there were among the great scholars of fiqh, the fuqaha, those who would not have any other job no other job except to teach the people their intentions in the action that they do. وَيَقْعُدَ إِلَى التَّدْرِيسِ فِي أَعْمَالِ النِّيَاتِ لَيْسَ إِلَّا And that person would sit down and hold classes with no other reason and no other purpose than to teach the people their niyat, to teach the people their intention. And that would be the class, you know, that would be the, the, the job of that scholar of fiqh to sit, that great knowledgeable person, that great imam would just sit all day teaching the people sincerity in their niyat. He said, فَإِنَّهُ مَا أَتَى عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّنَ النَّاسِ إِلَّا مِنْ تَضْعِيِ النِّيَاتِ He said, because what really caused many people to lose and to go astray was the fact that they got lost when it came to their niyat. This is what caused many, many people to get to be lost and caused many people to go astray, was because they got lost when it came to their niyat. They lost the right intention towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a beautiful hadith. This hadith is the hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'ab. And the hadith is narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmad and others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bashir hadihi al-umma bis-sana'i wa-deeni wa-rif'ah. He said, give glad tidings to this umma that they will have a high status. Sana here means al-ulu wal-irtifa'ah, means highness and they will be raised up. 
and they will have a deen. Their religion is the one that will remain and will stay. And a rif'a, and they will be raised up and given a high position. وَالنَّصْرِ وَالتَّمْكِينِ فِي الْأَرْضِ And they will have victory, and they will be established on the earth. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَمَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْهُمْ عَمَلَ الْآخِرَةِ لِلدُّنْيَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نصيب. And whoever among them does the actions of the Akhirah for the sake of the dunya, does the actions of the Akhirah for the sake of the dunya, they won't have any share in the Akhirah at all. So what is Ikhlas, my brothers and sisters in Islam? Ikhlas, it is ifradu al-haqqi subhanahu bil qasdi fi ta'ah it is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your intention for doing good deeds. وَتَخْلِيصُ الْعَمَلِ مِنَ الشَّوَائِبِ وَتَصْفِيَةُ الْفِعْلِ عَنْ مُلَاحَظَةِ الْمَخْلُقِينَ And it is to get all of the, th- to purify all of the deeds from the things that take it away from being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things that would, if you like, uh, cause your deeds to be, or things that would take away from your deeds, things that would dis- that would de- deviate or divert your deeds away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to purify your actions from mulahadat al-makhluqeen, from being seen by the creation, and the creation sort of people saying, oh, look at the way this person prays, look at how excellent their prayer is, look at how generous they are, to clean your actions away from this. And then even, not only that, but also, وَهُوَ التَّوَقِّي مِن مُلَاحَظَةِ الْخَلْقِ حَتَّى عَنْ نَفْسِكِ And it is to protect your deeds from people seeing them and people commenting on them, even from your own self. And you remember in the hadith about the seven that are shaded under the shade of Allah on the day when there is no shade except His shade, is the person who gives a sadaqah, the person who gives a sadaqah, and he gives that sadaqah for akhfaha, he keeps it so hidden. Hatta la ta'lama shimaluhu ma tunfiqu yaminu, until his left hand doesn't even know what his right hand gave. And that is what an, a, a wonderful example of what it means to hide your deeds even, even from yourself, even from yourself. You don't become impressed with your own deeds. You don't seek to adorn your own deeds. You seek to purify it from anyone seeing it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anyone who praises your deeds, that's not, that doesn't concern you. What concerns you is only what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even from your own self, like the person who gave a charity and hid it to the point that their left hand didn't know what their right hand gave. And Al-Imam ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-amalu bi ghayri ikhlasin wa laqtida kal musathiri yamla'u jarabahu ramla yuthqiluhu wa la yanfa'u. Al-Imam ibn Qayyim, he said, actions without sincerity and without following the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and these are the two conditions for your actions to be accepted, they are like the traveler who fills his satchel with sand. Can you imagine a traveler who has a, a satchel or a vessel that they store their provisions for their journey, like a suitcase or a satchel? And in our day, in our, our age, it would be like a suitcase, right? And you imagine you're going on a journey and you filled your suitcase with sand. يُثْقِلُهُ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُ It's heavy, it makes it burdensome for you, but it doesn't benefit you anything. And that is the example of the action that doesn't have sincerity for Allah and doesn't follow the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's like filling your suitcase with sand. It burdens you and it's a heavy weight to carry. It's a burden to carry and a heavy weight to carry, but it doesn't benefit you anything in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Some of the pious predecessors used to say, مَا نَزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءَ عَزْ مِنَ التَّوْفِيقَ وَلَا صَعَدَ مِنَ الْأَرْضَ عَزْ مِنَ الْإِخْلَاصِ 
They used to say nothing came down from the heavens that was more mighty and great and more powerful than success from Allah, tawfiq for Allah, to 